Hello and uh, welcome to Ideal Speak. Uh, today I'm going to talk about football. I'm going to teach you the vocabulary you need to talk about football. These days we have the Euro 2024 uh, football tournament going on and that's exactly what's brought me to the idea that uh, creating a video of uh, football vocabulary, a video where I can teach you the football terms uh, could be an interesting idea these days. Uh, when you go to cafes or bars with your family or friends, uh, you probably, if you look at the TV in there, you're going to see a football match being broadcast. And uh, if you don't know the English vocabulary for football, uh, you will feel frustrated and um, won't be able to talk about what you see there. So um, as for the source of our lesson today, I'm going to use this book. It is Oxford Idioms and Phrasal Verbs Advanced. Unit 25 is about football and uh, tournaments. And uh, there are lots of uh, phrases and vocabulary here that I'm going to walk you through uh, during this lesson. I just thought uh, introducing this book to you would be a good idea. Uh, this book has, I think, over a hundred lessons and uh, I won't be able to make a video of each lesson. I'll be able to only cover the important parts of it. So. You can you can buy this book. You can download the PDF version of this book. It's all over uh, the internet and uh, study some other chapters on your own. As for today, um, as I said, we are gonna go over the vocabulary on unit of twenty five of this book. And uh, this is for this lesson. I I haven't done any preparation. So I'm just talking spontaneously. Uh, so don't be surprised if you see me thinking very deeply be of an example before I give you, before I make this example. I'm going to have to make some examples with uh, some uh, well-known teams. For that, I have prepared uh, the Premier League. You might already be familiar with Premier League. It's uh, the most important uh, tournament played in uh, in England. In the last Premier League, we had Manchester City, the champion, and then uh, on the second place was Arsenal, uh, with eighty nine points chasing Manchester City. Manchester City uh, became the champion of the. Uh, the latest uh, Premier League with 91 points and the second place was for Arsenal with 89 points. So there was only uh, two points difference between these two teams on the top of this standing. And then we had uh, Liverpool in the third position with 82 points only. So there was sort of a huge gap between the second team, which was Arsenal, and the third team, that was Liverpool. So here I'm going to start with um, the first phrase I see on uh, unit 25 of this book. It is on the bench. Bench is a set of seats where, the, where some players sit during the match. Some of them could be sitting there for all the match. Some of them could be sitting there for the first half of the match and then be substituted with uh, those players on the field during the second half of the match. And uh, the, the, the first phrase is on the bench. So if a player starts the match on the bench, it means uh, he is not among the 11 players that starts the match. Um, some coaches may may decide to leave uh, their more experienced players on the bench and uh, give the opportunity to their younger players to be among the the starting eleven, uh, to be among the players that starts the match. 
And uh, in this case, we have another phrase coming up. It is gamble on. So if a coach decides to uh, leave their experienced players on the bench at the beginning of the match and give the opportunity to the younger players to play, to start the match, we can say he is gambling on, uh, the coach is gambling on his uh, young players. As, uh, as you know, uh, the more experienced players are more likely to perform better in a match. But when the coach decides to leave them on the bench uh, when, the, when, the, when the match starts, we say he is gambling on uh, the younger players, uh, meaning he is uh, taking a risk. In this case, a coach can't be sure whether these young players uh, will show a good performance during the match or not. And sometimes uh, this decision might pay off, sometimes not. So that brings us to the next expression, pay off. If a decision, an idea, or a plan pays off, it means it returns success. It uh, leads you to success. Um, so we can say, for example, uh, the coach's decision to leave the experienced players on the bench and gamble on the young players did not pay off. It means the young players uh, couldn't take advantage of this opportunity. So pay off means to, uh, to, to be successful. If something pays off, it leads you to success. It becomes successful. Um, here we have, uh, as I said uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, in the previous season of the Premier League, uh, Manchester City became the champion with Arsenal uh, chasing them with only two go uh, two points difference before the last match of the recent premier league was played arsenal could still uh, become the champion of the league uh, win the title of the league as they were only two points uh, behind manchester city uh, so here we have an interesting phrase for that in contention arsenal was in contention for the league title before the last match was played. Uh, but they weren't so lucky because Manchester City could, uh, could win uh, their last match of the tournament and uh, grab the title. But before that, Arsenal was still in contention uh, for the title, for the champion position or the first position of this league. Um, Sometimes, again, in the in the Premier League, uh, as you, as you know, the Premier League uh, is played in the United Kingdom, uh, which is uh, an island, an island, uh, and uh, mo mo most of the most most of the cities in this country are located very close to the sea. So it usually rains a lot in the England or in the United Kingdom. And uh, sometimes um, a, a scheduled match, a match that is scheduled to take place on a special date at uh, a certain hour, is cancelled just because of uh, heavy rain. In this case, we can say the match uh, has been rained off. So to be rained off is uh, the other phrase that, uh, again, I'm teaching you from this book. So if a football match or if any other event is rained off, it is canceled, it is called off due to heavy rain. Uh, let's again uh, talk about the last match of the previous season, the recent season. Uh, Arsenal, uh, I don't remember which team Arsenal uh, played against, but I remember uh, they started the match uh, very well. They uh, they could fight very well, but until uh, Manchester City scored their first goal. After Man City scored their first goal, the Arsenal team players thought that uh, they didn't have any chance to to win the title, so 
they kind of gave up. Here we have another good expression. It is go all out for something. Uh, the Arsenal players started the match going all out for a victory and then uh, the, the, the league title. But after uh, they realized that they had no chance, uh, Manchester City was going to grab the, uh, the league title. They didn't try very hard anymore. So to go all out for something means to uh, make uh, all the efforts within your capabilities to, to grab something, to achieve something. Uh, we can use this uh, phrase even outside the football context. We can say, um, you're going to... Uh, you're going to pass this exam only if you go all out for it. it means only if you make a big effort to uh, to pass the exam. Um, and that again leads us to another expression with with the same meaning. It is dig deep. So if you dig deep to to achieve something, you use all your efforts to get it. We can say. Uh, the Arsenal players uh, dug deep in the first 30 minutes of the match or they went all out for a victory in the first 30 minutes of the match but after they uh, after they noticed they couldn't uh, they couldn't grab the title after they noticed that even a victory in that match could not bring them the league title they they gave up and um, another phrase here we have is uh, within striking distance of somebody or something. Um, I'm going to focus on uh, these two teams, Manchester City and Arsenal. As I said, they are very popular teams. They have a lot of fans all over the world. And uh, some of you uh, might be uh, big fans of these two teams. So that's kind of uh, making the the lesson, the, the content of the lesson more interesting to you. Um, we can say Arsenal was always within striking distance of Manchester City. It means uh, before the league ended, Arsenal was always in the second position. At any moment, they were uh, likely to... Uh, to ascend to the first position. Within striking distance of uh, somebody or something, Arsenal was always within striking distance of Manchester City. They were always uh, likely to, to win a match and uh, on the other side, Manchester City could lose a match and uh, Arsenal could become the champion or could go ascent to the first position of the standing. The other phrase is uh, lose the plot. Have you ever seen uh, a football match where the players start the game very well and they go all out for the victory for, uh, for example, the first 70 minutes of the match or for the first half of the match and then after that they give up. Um, it means they suddenly uh, we, we can say they suddenly lose the plot or we can say their captain or their coach lost the plot after they conceded too many goals. Uh, I, I remember uh, once uh, my, my, one of my favorite teams played uh, against, uh, against Real Madrid. As you know, Real Madrid is one of the best teams out there. And uh, so our, our team was like much weaker than the Real Madrid team. So they, they conceded like four goals, five goals, just in the first 30 minutes of the match. And then they, they had, uh, our team's players had lost all of their hope. They, they didn't have any plan. They, it, their, their coach had lost the plot. They didn't know what to do just to stop Real Madrid uh, from scoring more goals on them. And uh, yeah, that is the expression to lose the plot. And uh, the other one is 
to be or to go out of the running for something. These days we have the the Euro 2024 on the way and I'm going to take a look at the the standings of different groups. For example, here on group D, we have the Netherlands on the first position. They have got a draw and uh, France is in the same situation. They've got a draw and a win. Uh, and then we have Austria in the third place with uh, one win and uh, one lose. And then on the fourth place, we have Poland. Poland have lost uh, two matches. Uh, altogether, in the group stage of this tournament, every team gets to play three games. And if your team lose two of these three games, it means they are out of the running for the tournament. It means they are not going to uh, ascend to the knockout stage. So here we have in group D, we have a Poland uh, out of the running for the knockout stage. Like they stand no chance, even if they win their upcoming match. I think it is against France. They are not likely to win. But even if they uh, win their third match against France, uh, they are going to be knocked out of the, the tournaments. They have no chance to go to the knockout stage. So in this case, we say they are out of the running for the tournament or they are out of the running for the knockout stage. And that brings us to the one of the last phrases we are going to discuss in this lesson. It is ease off. So I'm going to give you an example with this phrase, this phrasal verb, is of. And the first example is outside the football context. It is about pain. Imagine you have a strong pain, for example, in your arm or in your back, and then you, you decide to take a painkiller. After a, a couple of hours, the painkiller could ease off the pain. Or we can say your pain uh, will ease off after you take a painkiller. Or we can say uh, in the morning uh, it was raining heavily, but uh, at noon or in the afternoon the rain eased off. It means the, the, the intensity of rain in the afternoon uh, was, not, uh, was not as much as or as strong as uh, in the morning. You know, there is a rule in football saying if you want to win, if you want to uh, grab the victory, you will have to fight until the last second of the match. If you ease off even two minutes before the match is over, you are very likely to concede a goal and uh, lose the victory. I think uh, that's all for today. At least I am not able to see um, anything new here in uh, unit 25 of this book. I'm going to show you the book one more time. Uh, it is Idioms and Phrasal Verbs for uh, Advanced Level, published by Oxford University. Uh, I think I'm going to make uh, more videos in the future uh, discussing the vocabulary, the phrases in other units of the book. But as I said, I won't be able to cover uh, all the book or all the units of the book in our, in our videos. So if you want, you can download the PDF of this book or buy it uh, from an online store. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And uh, if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Uh, next time, uh, I will make another video uh, discussing another unit of this book, the same book. And uh, until then, uh, take care. Goodbye.